Okay, everyone, um, I'm going to show you kind of more about, I had some questions about the swatches and font sample. This is how I kind of do it. If I'm going to meet with a client and uh, they want to look at some different colors and some different fonts, uh, usually, you know, I call them up and ask them what are their favorite colors and stuff like that. Sometimes like, I don't know, surprise me, or I like blues or I like purples. So one of the first things I do is I always make sure if I'm doing a, uh, I, I do it in Illustrator for one, <clears throat> excuse me, and then I have, uh, I set up a custom palette which has my color guide, cooler, and swatches in it. You know, so I just open each one of these up and attach them. Like this can actually be over here if you just kind of push it in there and get towards the middle. Like you'll see that the, if I do this, it's going to actually attach it to swatches, but if I move towards the middle, you see a blue line, let it go. I mean, that way I can just have this wherever I want. And so these are the tools I have open for my colors. And then I have over here, my characters. And if you're in Creative Cloud, make sure you're logged in. See, I'm logged into Creative Cloud right now. And uh, this, because using Creative Cloud, it makes your life a whole lot easier. So let's find some colors. Now, uh, you can just sample different colors, but I like to use Cooler, and it's just a palette. And you see I have uh, some cool themes that I like. But if you press this little button right here, it launches the website. So if you're logged in, um, you can have this on your mobile device too, so it's kind of cool, or your iPad or your Surface. So you can create your own custom colors. You can move this around just by clicking and dragging and creating some. Usually there's a lot of cool themes, so I'll kind of look at themes. And um, sometimes I have like my favorites, all themes. So here's some kind of cool themes here. Or you just hit explore. And they have lots and lots of different ones. Lots of different ones. So this can give you some really good inspiration for some good color themes. And this one's kind of cool, so I'll select this one and you kind of hover over it and you can download it. You can actually link it and send it to people too so they can open it. And that's downloaded so I'm going to use this as an example. I go back into Illustrator and I go to my swatches, click the little expansion button over here, open swatch library, other library, and it's in my downloads, so I go snag it. And you'll see there's the ACE Adobe Swatch Exchange. I don't know if that's really what it stands for, but ACE is your swatches. And I click open. And see, theme 8 right there. Now you can snag the whole thing and say, yeah, I want to in my swatches. And you can put it in there if you want, if you don't want the separate one open, and then just close it. So what I'll kind of do sometimes is uh, I'll draw a series of boxes and make sure there's like no fill. And I like to sh hold uh, shift option so it just creates a nice square. So I'll move that kind of down. <clears throat> then I copy, paste, paste, paste. I'll get a couple going. And snag all those and usually just kind of um, I'll line them up so they all kind of have the same distance between them. I didn't like doing that at all. So just kind of toss them up there, paste another one. You guys get the gist of it here, and paste the third one. And this is what I'd actually send to my client. So I'd select the first one. Say, I like that purple. Select this one, this purple, this one, maybe this purple, and this one, this shade. Now sometimes what you can do too is if you have your color guide up, you can look at certain colors. Like we can look at this color here and say, I want to see what the complementary colors are of this and this will bring up complementary colors of a certain color. So this is kind of a neat way too to uh, find different shades and different um, t 
tints of the same color. So let's say I like those colors. <clears throat> Next thing I do is I'd show you know I'd show the client. This is a swatch sample here. Let's just copy those down. I'm just hitting Shift Option by the way, and so I have another one. But let's say the client, you know, I go back onto Cooler. It's already open, so I can just come down here and say they also like uh, browns. It's kind of boring, but let's say they like it. Download it. Go back into Illustrator. Open Swatch Library. Other. Downloads. And theme one. Open. All right. So I've added those over there. So I could grab each one of those and say, okay, that's a brown. Okay. Then what I do is I uh, I get some fonts. Now I've I've got some of my own fonts that I like to use. But what I want to show you is um, there's this, if you're using Creative Cloud, I would really suggest starting to use Add Fonts from Typekit. The reason is is I know a lot of you guys like to go to websites that have free fonts like DA Fonts and stuff like that. But if you use Typekit, which is included in your Creative Cloud and you send someone a file and those fonts are missing, when I open it up, it'll launch Typekit, go find the font that you used from Adobe Typekit and install it on my computer and then I can use it. So it's a really good sharing program for fonts. And like I said, make sure your Creative Cloud is on and you're running it. So you click on Add Fonts from Typekit and it launches this really cool site. This is Adobe Typekit. And there's a lot of free fonts on there, and there, you got some pretty cool ones. So let's look at some like decorative fonts because I know you guys love decorative fonts. Oh, those are kind of me. Yeah, those are a little ugly. You can buy fonts here too. Um, so I'll just go with a serif. Okay. So I can come down, kind of look at these different ones, and you can unlock more if you do like the plans and stuff like that. You can look at their full library. But uh, these are some of the free ones. So I'll use this uh, Source Serif Pro. Use fonts and sync. Now those fonts have been synced to my Creative Class. So it kind of pops up here saying that, yay, these have been synced. Uh, if you do, by the way, use a specific font that you find somewhere else, just remember in Illustrator, if it's spelled right, convert to outlines, and of course in digital publishing, you just package and zip your stuff. So I can actually look in here and look under my assets and see the different fonts that have been downloaded. Uh, so they have some pretty cool stuff. You can look at uh, the marketplace sometimes if you ever want to look at different things. And they have like this cool vector drawing of an iPhone. They have some patterns. So they got some pretty cool stuff in the marketplace that you can, some of it's free. You can just download it. It has a little button here. Click it, download it bring it up in Illustrator Photoshop works out great so I come back over to Illustrator make sure I see what my assets were with my fonts Courier Prime come back into Illustrator come over and double click this and start typing Courier and I have Courier Prime and see everything's synced now if I were to send you this file it open up in Illustrator and says hey there's Courier Prime's not one of your fonts would you like to sync it with Typekit? And you hit yes, and it goes onto the Creative Cloud and installs it in your computer at home, and everything syncs up. So this is a good thing. And you can tell the ones that are from Typekit. So uh, I'll click that. And usually what I do is I'll get the text tool, and I just type out like a letter B, no big deal. <clears throat> and go in there and kind of make that a little bit bigger. So I just use my arrow keys and you see the point size gets bigger and bigger. And I like to kind of uh, mess around a little bit with them. So I get this B and I'd like to you know, know what B looks like just with black text. And then I might shift and put B down here. And on this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this dark brown. So I can see what it looks like with that dark brown. Or sometimes I'll come over and say, hey, what does it look with a lighter brown? What I think might look cool though is I'll copy this over 
over to this one and I'll make this as light and that looks pretty good so I'll put that over there and I'll make another copy of it put it down there maybe the lighter brown and then sometimes I'll grab the stroke and I'll make the stroke itself like this light and I'll look at it and this uh, experiment with type and color just to see how things look like on this one here I might move this up so I have the two B's here and then I'll see I'll move this down if I need to make the box bigger I can too is I'll just make um, switch the foreground background uh, how would white text look on this you know how would light text look on this one so this is what I kind of do and I'll grab this B whoops I'll grab this and I'll put it up here but then I'll go with this dark purple and switch those to see what that looks like on that one make another copy you know maybe this time I'll just go with that black see what black looks like that's not bad it's pretty bold come over here click on that one and let's just say I want to see what this light not bad let's see what this one looks like that has a really good contrast so I might go with that Maybe see what this fill with the stroke being the green. I don't even know where I got that green, but meh, eh, no, that doesn't look good at all. And this is really the only way I can find out what looks good and what doesn't, you know. And so usually what I do is I'll make, if I'm doing something for a client and they, they just really don't know what they're going to do, I'll give them four total. <coughs> excuse me and then I'll choose another swatch theme so I can come over here and choose this box and say okay I want to do dark blue make sure to switch him no fill on that and then with this dark blue I'll select the B and say oh I wonder what this color you know that's not bad and what about the teal with that and I just keep going and choosing different fun things to do you know, here's a cool fall one I can add in there. Say, okay, I want to do a fall theme down here, so I'm going to get this orange, change that to that dark orange. You know, that really pops out. Don't you love that word pop? And then I see if that works. And you see, that's all I'm doing here is I'm just experimenting. I'm just doing different things. And it allows you and your client to work together and choose a really good theme. I know some of you guys have already chosen colors. So if you just go in there and you can just sample colors that you've used. But this gives a good visual representation to your client of how certain colors work, certain fonts. You know, you can always change this font too. So you can come over and, you know, I'm going to select these two here and change those to a different font. Say, I wonder what that will look like. Or I grab this one and say, okay, I wonder what bold italic would look like. Uh, grab these two fonts here and say okay I'm gonna go eh, impact now I went old style okay so you just this is a good way to brainstorm and um, show your client and honestly even as a graphic designer see what colors work together see what colors don't work together before you get too far into your design uh, by doing something like this it's going to save you a lot of time and then when I'm when I'm done I just save this as an illustrator file but if I'm sending this to a client then I'll just go ahead and do like a save as and I'll save it as like a PDF so they can open it and just hit save uh, if you're in a Mac um, PC I just think you print screen a lot of times I'll just I'll just hit uh, shift command 4 and do a screen cap of it and then send them a JPEG or a PNG. It's a really small file. They can open up. You can embed it in email. You know, um, that way they don't have to have it. Because a lot of your clients aren't going to have Illustrator. They're not going to have InDesign. They're not going to have Photoshop. So when you send them files, make sure it's a JPEG, a PNG, uh, a TIFF file, or a PDF. Um, most, almost all applications will open those files. And if you guys have any questions, let me know. Best way to get a hold of me is email. Thanks.